The Russian humanoid robot Marfa has enabled another research project at the Cosmonaut Training Center. How is Marfa different from her older brother Fyodor, and when will she fly into space? And is it true that androids will soon become as common companions for humans as courier robots or drones? We'll talk about this as well as about the new hero after a brief summary of positive news. In St. Petersburg, a border guard ship of Project 10410 was launched, and in the Yaroslavl region, two border guard ships of Project 03050 were launched. In the Nizhny Novgorod region, a Meteor 120R hydrofoil vessel of Project 03580 was launched. A prototype of the MC-21 aircraft with Russian engine systems and components has begun testing. The Jate shipyard has started operating in Yakutia. Production of light vans has started at the Solar's Alabuga plant, and in the Samara region, production of auto components for Lada Iskra vehicles has been launched. The first plant in Russia for the production of flexible solar modules has opened in Mordovia in Voronezh, production of large format insulating glass units. In Smolensk, a workshop for advanced purification of vegetable oils, and in the Vladimir region, a dairy complex. Cosmonaut Ivan Wagner, after returning to Earth, took part in an experiment to control the anthropomorphic, that is, humanoid robot Marfa. Obeying the commands of a copying-type control device, the android approached the functional panel to perform manipulations with the tool, placed it on the cargo platform, transported it to a designated point, fastened and unfastened the carabiner. This is already a routine procedure as part of the scientific research work of the Low Earth Orbit Constellation. Ivan Wagner performed exactly the same procedure before his flight into space, and comparing the results will help determine how being in orbit affects a person's ability to interact precisely with a robot. You may not have heard about the robot Marfa before, but you have probably heard about her older brother, the robot Fyodor, who visited the International Space Station in 2019 and safely returned to Earth. Fyodor was originally created for the needs of the Ministry of Emergency Situations as an assistant to rescuers, so he is quite massive and versatile. But practice has shown that different solutions are needed in space. In particular, humanoid legs are only necessary on Earth, while, for example, on the Moon, it makes more sense to use a wheeled chassis. That's how the concept of the Centaur robot was born, which received the unofficial name Marfa. Movable arms allow her to move up to 30 kilograms of cargo in lunar conditions and, for example, collect soil into a cart to later transport it to a spacecraft or base. Marfa can be controlled remotely from orbit or from Earth, although radio signal transmission is accompanied by a delay of several seconds. However, experiments have shown that a human operator gets used to such a lag fairly quickly and can confidently control the android even over long distances. But despite all the obvious advantages, Marfa will never fly to the moon. And here's why. Marfa, just like Fyodor, is a platform for testing new solutions, a kind of simulator for engineers. The moon has its own requirements for technology. Cosmic radiation, extreme temperatures, complex surface terrain, different gravity, and other factors make the task significantly more difficult. Special electronics resistant to sudden temperature changes, as well as materials and power sources, are required. Many of these things are already being produced in our country. After all, we were the first in the world to launch robots into space. The interplanetary station Luna 1 in 1959 became, although simple, the first automatic device. That's why Fyodor and Marfa serve as a foundation for creating new devices. But there is another relative in their family called Teledroid. It is created exclusively to work on the orbital station and is designed to replace the backup cosmonaut. As you know, outside the International Space Station, cosmonauts always work in pairs. 
One performs the main tasks while the other provides backup and assistance. But each spacewalk costs a lot of money and involves risk. If you replace the second person with an android, you can reduce the workload on people and the cost, since machines don't require life support systems. Like legs, the teledroid is a torso model. This is optimal for working in open space, since legs would only get in the way and make the design heavier. By the way, this same solution has already proven its effectiveness in some tasks on Earth as well. For example, when working at industrial sites, Russian torso robots handle hazardous waste in areas where people are not allowed to be. Previously, it was planned to send the first teledroid to the International Space Station in the current year, 2025. But we dare to assume that it will fly later, but already to the new Russian Orbital Station Station, and will probably be upgraded taking its features into account. So Fyodor's legacy lives on and develops, despite the fact that the public's attention is mainly focused on ground-based anthropomorphic robots that have learned to perform spectacular tricks. But have you ever wondered what they are really being created for? Ground-based humanoid robots remain, for now, entertainment for wealthy buyers. However, progress in their capabilities is obvious. It took developers 30 years to teach an android to do a somersault, but this pushed the industry far ahead. Mass production is necessary to reduce costs. And according to analysts' forecasts, by the year 2050, there will be about 63 million anthropomorphic robots in operation worldwide. This will make them a more common phenomenon than delivery robots are today. However, the main driver of innovation still remains the military sector. And as robots' capabilities grow, the initial skepticism about their place on the battlefield is fading, just as disbelief in drones' ability to decide the outcome of major battles once disappeared. Most likely, robots will first take the place of sappers and delivery personnel. This is already occurring, but currently using wheeled platforms. However, the advantage of the Android is its versatility. That means the day is not far off when they will be assigned to participate in firefights as well, at the very least to distract the enemy and draw fire, basically acting as cannon fodder, if I can put it that way, in the most dangerous areas. These are exactly the kinds of predictions currently found in the reports of specialized American and Chinese institutes. Therefore, when Elon Musk states that he will produce at least 5,000 Optimus robots this year, this should be taken very seriously. And right now we need to develop not only our own response, but also tactics to counter them on the battlefield. At the United Nations, the issue of banning the use of robots and artificial intelligence in combat operations is raised with enviable regularity. But the United States, China, and Russia are lukewarm about such initiatives, since no one has an effective solution yet, but everyone wants to be the first to get it. That's why the race is only just beginning. And who knows, maybe the descendants of our Fyodor, Marfa, and Teledroid will surprise us a lot in the very near future. We'll keep an eye on how things develop in the next episodes.